So it originates on the transverse processes of the cervical vertebra. I really want to call this out because I've seen uh, like probably over a hundred times students think that it is the spinous processes. So it's not attaching from the back. It's attaching way out on the sides. And we talked about this a little bit in lab yesterday, that this is actually a little bit more of a advanced and vulnerable area to palpate. So in today's palpation lab, it's very important when the clients face up and you get to this step of palpating for the transverse processes that you follow the directions very carefully and that like a massage, you're supporting their head and you're walking very carefully to feel those transverse processes. Um, between the transverse processes emerge the brachial plexus, which are nerves. So if there's sharp shooting pain, numbness, tingling, you just stop and move um, because you could be pressing on nerves. Um, the tricky thing I think about palpating these origins on the later is that not only are the nerves emerging, but there's just a lot of tight muscles in the area. So you kind of have to warm things up to even tell what's muscle or bone. The last thing that's tricky about palpating them is that if you were to like look at the picture here, it might look like this is just like, you know, just like obviously sticking out. But if you feel it with flat fingers and you palpate anterior posterior, What's interesting, I think, in the palpation or the feeling of the TVPs is that they kind of feel like more of a plateau and quite wide rather than just like little pinpoints sticking out. So it's kind of this big, wide plateau. And the other thing about it is it's way out on the side. You might have a, an inkling to go further back, but way out on the side under the ears, if you feel forward and back, it's like a big plateau and we'll practice this in lab because once you're sitting up, your neck muscles are balancing your head. And so they're already just tight, you know, just working. So we'll feel that one laying down. Um, the insertion is the spot a lot of massage therapists zero in on. And there is a adhesion, I would say on 98% of people, maybe even higher. Um, so we go from this medial border of the scapula between the superior angle and superior portion of the spine of the scapula, basically on this whole edge between the spine and the scapula, the superior angle is the attachment. Now, what do we have superior to, I'm sorry, superficial to levator scapula? Trapezius, awesome. Then what do we have immediately lateral to it, right there on that border? Superspinatus, right? So we're thinking of these things that like we have to both warm up to go through. We're thinking of like what's connected right next to it that it might get stuck to. End result is what's going on here. Um, also, we have this, the fibers are spinning here. Is that this usually feels just like one whole big knotted area. People just have a big old, it's like they have little, little golf balls right there. What's that? Yeah, yeah. It's super, super common. Um, it can be helpful to work through the layers and all that you will have. Um, now, now, some people, especially if you're sculpting this in clay later today and you want to be like, how does the twisting happen? Um, here's how the twisting happens. Maybe you can visually uh, see it, um, but I'm just going to call it out. We're taking um, the origin of C1 is going to the most inferior insertion, so the part closest to the spine, and then working our way opposite. So then the most inferior part in the cervical is going to the highest part on the scapula. And so that's what results in the twisting motion, which can help with the rotation movement of the scapula. And the reason I like to call out that twisting motion is because you're going to feel it in the muscle. And it's part of why that muscle always feels jacked up there. So you're never going to get it to go like 100% away. Um, but we'll show you some cool tricks where you can very specifically follow that muscle all the way up and release it pretty well. Um, questions so far? Yes, now it makes a little 
you understand this why this area is always tight and controlled because it's continuously kind of supporting the heaviest part, right? Because yeah. Mostly still up the legs. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And our heads are like a small bowling ball. I don't really bowl, so correct me, but the head is like eight, nine pounds. Is that a small bowling ball? Yeah. yeah. So that's a lot to balance. If you could imagine, like, if you're, you know, you just held a bowling ball and you were trying to, like, balance it, you know, like that. So anytime you throw yourself off the center of gravity, your neck muscles are just like, whoa, you know, balancing that. So. It's a lot of work for them. And the pressure increases dramatically the more out of alignment you are. So like the lightest your head could be is if you're in perfect alignment. And then it increases like dramatically. Like if you have that head forward posture, it could be like 30 pounds of pressure. Yeah, it's crazy. Your eight pound bowling ball can go up to 30 pounds. When you have the posture that for so many of us feels like the relaxing posture, you're like this, but that my my ear hole should be over my shoulder and when i when i slump you can see how far forward my head is and that's just so much pressure you can feel it if you exaggerate whatever your posture is if you just kind of slump even further than you normally do you can feel how much tension there that puts in your neck yeah Whew, 60 pounds. That's a lot. All right, so if we uh, shorten the distance between these two points, what motions do you think we can do? Let's look at the scapula first. What do you think we could do to that scapula if we're pulling up oh, from here? Elevating, awesome. Like forward levator scapula. I didn't mean to cross that out. Um, if we put a pin in here and we pull from here to here, what kind of motion would we get? Downward, awesome. Then let's look at the fact that we could stabilize the shoulder and just move the head and neck. So if we pull from here to here, but pull the head and neck side instead of the scapular side, what movement movements? Laterally flex the head and neck and then also rotate um, to the same side. Now that's unilaterally, uni for one, that means your left or your right. We can also fire left and right at the same time. So they can extend the head and neck. Um, and you were calling that out, how you thought it was interesting, Gio, that that didn't attach to the head. Um, we have a lot of, uh, you know, little vertebra attachments in the, in the neck, so it can, you know, pull it back from the neck instead of the, all the way from the head. Um, atlas axis or, or way up top first two vertebra. Okay. Yeah, so, um, the atlas is this one right here. And then the axis is the one, uh, the C1. And then the axis is C2, this one uh, right below it. Sure. The atlas is C1 and the axis is C2. And right after the shoulder, the next thing we're gonna focus on in detail is the spine. So we will slow down and look at all the details just like we did with the scapula. I had to stop and think which one was which. And the way I think about it is Greek mythology. Atlas, I don't know his whole story, but the character with the weight of the world on his heads or holding the, the earth. So um, that's like your atlas is, is the vertebra that's holding your actual head. And then the axis actually has a thing that sticks up. Um, so that's how I remember C1, C2. But again, we'll, we'll study the spine in as much detail as we studied the scapula. Yeah. Um, so questions about levator scapula. Is it a synergist with the trapezius? Or is it most for extension of the animal? Yes. And what are, what motion on the scapula do traps do? Oh, upper traps. Oh, upper traps would also be down the rotation. And the scapula movement pulling from up here? 
and elevation. Yep, we can work together on that. Speaking of synergists, I don't know if this is the right page, but now that you have more muscles at your disposal, let's see, I got the synergists here. So remember I said uh, Trail Guide has these awesome synergist pictures for all of the actions. And I did not focus on it for the first couple of muscles we looked at because it gets a little overwhelming if you haven't even studied the muscles. But as we layer in the muscles, I think it's very useful in your studies to start focusing on which muscles do the same. Here we can see in elevation, we've got trap, upper fibers, rhomboids, and levator. These are all the muscles doing that elevation. If you're wondering where that is, it's page 53, 64, 65, and 66. Thank you. And so let's just like call out this elevation one. So when we get stressed, a lot of us hold our shoulders in elevation with our shoulders up towards our ears. So you think the muscles that elevate are short and tight in that position or long and weak? Short and tight. So with the so many people having this tension pattern of elevating their shoulders, now you know all the three major muscles that are short and tight. So you want to get those to calm down. So you talk to traps, rhomboids, levator, and that is a super, super common pattern. So that's another one is client walks in and, or they just have a computer job or they're a student or they're just human. And you can be like, okay, it's probably those muscles, right? And again, they're going to think like, wow, how did you know that? And you're like, yeah, because you're human. 